Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, my very good friends, colleagues, students, learners, my peers, mentors, Assalamu alaikum. And today we will uh, discuss the third lecture of the Environmental Impact Assessment. Uh, if you remember in the last three lectures, rather, this is the fourth lectures to be more correct, that we discussed mainly in the first lecture, if you remember, we discussed the, uh, the EIA process and then we discussed the uh, various methods and tools to predict or project the environmental impact and uh, in the last lecture we discussed the risk assessment environmental risk assessment for different kinds of risks and today uh, we will uh, further focus on some of the important environmental attributes or parameters which are normally very important to assess in the uh, in the uh, environmental risk assessment we uh, certainly discussed the general method last day uh, in which we uh, certainly uh, identified that the first very important is the risk identification and then the rest uh, qualification, quantification, characterization, and then you uh, develop the risk response or management plan and uh, which also includes the risk monitoring. Today, we will discuss some of the uh, important attributes of the environment which are normally uh, encountered during the uh, developmental projects. Uh, some of the very uh, important environmental parameters include, for example, the air quality, uh, then the noise or sound quality. We also have the problems like visual impact assessment or land. Uh, use impact assessment or uh, land contamination in other words we have the water uh, impact on the water uh, we have the socio-economic impact or social impacts uh, there are impacts on the uh, for example the archaeologies and cultural heritages uh, and of course the ecological impact so these are some of the very important impacts which we normally study in the environmental assessment uh, so we uh, start with the uh, uh, for example, uh, I discussed some of the parameters of the today lecture. The air quality assessment uh, is one of the very important area of the environmental assessment. And uh, as we all know, that the quality of air uh, by and large the, is, is very uh, poor in the developing countries, including Pakistan. And uh, if we just go to the uh, the uh, study of the environmental uh, quality or quality standards in Pakistan, by and large, in all the major cities of Pakistan, we have uh, very big problems of smog, uh, of air quality deterioration. And some cities of Pakistan, like Peshawar and even uh, Lahore, have been, uh, Karachi, have been described as the most pollute, polluted uh, cities of the world. So uh, today we will discuss that how this air quality is assessed in, in the environmental parameters. And uh, certainly in next lecture, we will also discuss some of the standards which are important for the air quality standards. Uh, the air quality assessment, uh, which involves the identification, production, and evaluation of critical variables such as source emission and meteorological condition uh, potential quality of as a result of emission from proposed project and ultimately an assessment to ensure compliance with the ambient air quality standards. Uh, so there are uh, ambient air quality standards uh, which are uh, given by the National uh, Environmental Protection Agency, uh, our uh, EPA Environmental Protection Agency, and we have to see that in case of any new development, what can be the impact on the air quality and what mitigation measures can be deployed to, uh, to bring the air quality to the uh, tolerable limit of the ambient air quality standards. 
uh, the which is AAQS. We also quantify and qualify and quantify the impacts on air quality through project design, planning, and mitigate them. So this is once we predict and we assess the impact on the air quality, then certainly we would try to see that how the uh, uh, the uh, impact can be mitigated through better planning and mitigation strategies. Uh, so Kenter, who is a very uh, expert in the environmental assessment, he identified uh, five or six parameters of the ambient air quality uh, assessment, uh, uh, which is uh, mm, ambient air quality uh, identification and impact. That what are the uh, different impacts? Description of existing environmental condition. That is the baseline before the project. Procurement of relevant uh, environmental qualities, air quality standard or guidelines. Then impact prediction, not prediction, prediction. And finally, identification and operation of mitigation measures. So this is just a generic process we uh, can have for all the impacts assessments. Now, this will also include the ambient air pollution concentrations, a pollutant source and specific location, meteorology. Uh, this is really very important because the meteorological uh, components like the, uh, the humidity, the air uh, flow, the temperature, and the uh, other impor important meteorological, meteorological uh, components have a very strong impact on the uh, dispersion of the pollutants. Uh, the local topography is also very important because the topography also plays a very important role. Uh, for example, in the hilly, hilly area, the uh, smog impact is very low and we normally, uh, the smog is intercepted by the uh, uneven landscape. But in case of plain areas, the smoke, since we don't have the interception of the landscape, and the topo topography is normally very level, so we can have a very larger extent of smoke. Physical conditions affecting the pollutant dispersions, uh, this is also very important, and sensitive receptors and their location. There might be, uh, for example, the uh, children, maybe the, uh, the aged population, the old houses, there might be some uh, a TB hospital, uh, which in which we are normally treating the, the people with pulmonary uh, infections and diseases. So these are the people who are very sensitive receptor to the air uh, pollutions. Uh, now the characteristic of emission sources, uh, for example, how do uh, we identify the emission sources in terms of the rate of emission, the efflux velocity, velocity that what will be the velocity of uh, efflux the flux temperature, uh, the temperature at which the uh, pollutant would emit, the source morphology, uh, that what is the uh, nature of the source uh, from which this pollut these uh, pollutants are emitting. The third is the impact assessment that once we uh, identify the baseline, we also identify the source and we uh, can uh, then uh, we go for the assessment of impacts. Uh, and the cumulative concentration. There are many models and mathematical equations, for example, the computer simulation models, which are used uh, for short term to predict the concentration for few minutes, days, or months. Long term models for seasonal annual average can also be used. There can be uh, some mathematical models. We have the Gaussian equations uh, in which uh, we can determine the uh, prediction of uh, the temporal and spatial prediction of the air pollution. Uh, with respect to the source, and there are many uh, other standards. So there are some standard guidelines. Uh, Pakistan air quality standards have been already developed by Pakistan Environmental Protection Agency, and we will discuss these standards in the last lecture of the environmental impact assessment series. Uh, the, ne the next uh, very important is uh, the NICE, uh, because the NICE pollution uh, is very important uh, in in the projects, in, in, in many cases, the NICE pollution is temporary in the sense that the, uh, the NICE is only coming from the, uh, from the construction activities, from the transportation, from the vehicle which are uh, applying in the construction sites. But certainly uh, there can be even NICE in case of uh, factories like steel mills, like uh, construction yards, construction, uh, precast construction, uh, machines and uh, so there are many uh, kinds of uh, projects in which we even after the completion of the project we can have the noise uh, which is the unpleasant uh, 
sound in the ears of the human being. And normally uh, there is a limit given by the Environmental Protection Agency beyond, beyond which the, uh, the sound becomes noise and it becomes really unfavorable and pleasant for the listeners. Now the uh, noise assessment, uh, we try to see that uh, what are the noise level of the alternative between project construction and operations determine the existing baseline noise. Uh, this is again very important that whenever we are going for impact reduction, we need to have the baseline. And so we uh, also identify the unique noise source before we start the project. For example, there can be some, uh, some train sounds in a particular time of the day. There might be some uh, mill sounds. There might be some uh, air mills or there might be some uh, factories already uh, running in that, in that uh, locality which has a specific sound. So this unique sound uh, source will be identified at the baseline stage. And then uh, we uh, get the applied standards of the noise pollution uh, by the EPA. And then uh, we try to see the macro level impact assessment of the uh, each alternative of design we have thought of to see that what can be the impact of different alternatives of design in the terms of noise. And then we compare the uh, standards with the impact, uh, the, the predicted impact, and uh, we see that if there is any abatement and uh, mitigation strategies required or not. So uh, we see that if there is uh, uh, some very uh, high level of noise, particularly in the construction phase, in the projects, we have the high level of noise, and we recommend the personal protection equipment for the uh, for the uh, for the workers, which includes the, for example, the earplugs, uh, their goggles, their uh, gloves, and their uh, boots, gum boots, uh, shoes, and so on. Uh, another very important impact is uh, on the visual uh, quality of the land because when we develop the new tunnels, new roads, new, new highways, uh, definitely we cut the land and we at the at the at many times we deteriorate the uh, quality of air. Uh, at the same time, if when we construct the high-rise buildings, uh, the air quality of the neighborhood, uh, the visual quality of the neighborhood is also affected. And definitely the people uh, who are living around these high rise buildings uh, have a very highly polluted impact, uh, uh, visual quality. So we would like to see that what can be the uh, visual uh, impact on the visual quality in case of any new construction, any new project, which are, uh, for example, in Islamabad, we could see a lot of air pollution by, uh, by the construction of these uh, towers, telecom towers, uh, which has certainly deter deteriorated the air quality, uh, the visual quality of th those areas. Uh, similarly, in uh, areas where we have the windmills and we have the ear mills, again, we can have some impact on the uh, visual quality of, uh, of, the, uh, of the area. So uh, we would like to see that uh, in case of visual impact assessment, we would see that what will be the size and duration of the facility. For example, if the, uh, the facility is temporary just only for certain uh, limited period, then definitely it can be, uh, it can be uh, not, uh, it can be reversible kind of impact. Then the local environmental setting, for example, the landscape resources, the quality of views, the components of the landscape which are protected, for example, cultural and historical proposal for development in local plains, local community involvement. So all these are really important when we are thinking about the visual quality. Uh, description of the development, the appearance and layout of the main elements of the facility, for example, the size, material, color, form, and non-visual characteristics. Non-visual characteristics may uh, include things like uh, noise emissions and things like that. So these are very important to study when we are thinking about the uh, visual impact. Now the baseline assessment is really very important to uh, before we predict the impacts. For example, if there are some rivers, mountains, woodlands and designated uh, area, national parks, and then existing data or field study. And then we try to see the impact in uh, the area of the landscape the zone of the visual influence, for example, if uh, uh, 
a high rise tower is being constructed in the in the community in the area in the neighborhood then what will be the uh, the visual influence of this building and the number of ways in which the visual or functional landscape are affected and the overall effect of the project on the landscape for example in terms of cutting filling uh, removal uh, so all these are really very important in terms of uh, visual quality assessment or visual impact assessment so uh, we can have for example intrusion uh, which uh, intrudes the quality of the vision though it is not obstructing the second can be the obstructing in which the entire view is obstructed and we could see that with the construction of high rise building in islamabad the visual quality uh, of uh, islamabad has been reduced and many times we see these high uh, high level towers or high rise towers obstructing the quality and we can't see the beautiful uh, Margala Hills and many times the beautiful, uh, the beautiful landscape of Islamabad. Uh, so there may be uh, some low-tech uh, planes like perspective sketches, physical planes, photography, or we may use the digitized data. Uh, uh, currently, we are using a very uh, modern GIS and remote sis sensing tools, uh, which can help us to see that what can be the visual quality, uh, which can be impacted by the new developments. Now the visual impact can be minimal. Uh, for example, very small part of the area has been covered by the new construction or facility. Uh, the slight effect may be minor uh, portion, moderate effect that there are some changes we occur, which occur for substantial length of time and area and then substantial effect where the overall scene is altered in substantial length and time and severe impact where the overall view of, is altered for much of the operation uh, period. So uh, this is kind of permanent distortion uh, and intrusion or obstruction to the visual quality and this will certainly have a long-term impact on the uh, people who are living in those particular areas. Uh, the ecological impact is also very important that how the, um, uh, the uh, new constructions are impacting the terrestrial environment, the aquatic environment, uh, and the uh, natural environment. So this is really very important. And uh, uh, there are, uh, for example, the change in habitat, the composition and population density of plants and animals, the habitat damage, the displacement of flora and fauna. Now there are various uh, assessment methodology, but unfortunately the ecological assessment is one of the most difficult part of the assessment studies in the environmental assessments. Uh, for example, we can review the maps, aerial photographs, the local authority planes, we can work with the uh, World uh, Wildlife Fund, uh, we can work with the uh, forest department, we can work with the animal uh, department, uh, as well in all these uh, stakeholders which can have the census and data about the various uh, uh, flora and fauna. The local standards and databases can also be used to uh, see that what can be the impact of uh, new development on the, for example, if we are constructing a new road or a new highway in a forest area uh, where we already have a number of species uh, in which some of these species may be very endangered, uh, then how can these species can be impacted uh, on this new development and the construction of uh, new uh, infrastructure? For example, we could see that the Kalar Kahar region of the uh, M2 motorway, uh, as a matter of fact, was passing through the is passing through the national park of Kalar Kahar, and a lot of uh, visual as well as uh, natural flora and fauna has been disturbed. So this is uh, uh, naturally a very important thing, but unfortunately, it's not only difficult to assess, uh, but at the same time, it requires a lot of money, a lot of data. But we are using the different overlay techniques. We discussed this uh, last time that we uh, we develop the maps of different uh, environmental, uh, different uh, flora and fauna, and then we uh, place them one upon the other, and then we develop the uh, final uh, map of the uh, map. Uh, different terminologies are used. For example, the beetle rarity total, uh, species rarity total, beetle quality factor species quality factor, rarity quality factor, and these are some of the factors uh, which determine the number of the species, uh, their uh, quality and their uh, rarity, uh, which ultimately would tell us that whether these are endangered, rare, and what can be the impact on their quality and quantity. 
Water assessment is very important uh, when we think about the new development of the industrial effluents. Uh, we are using a lot of uh, discharges, uh, which are ultimately thrown to the water bodies and water rivers. And certainly, if these uh, waters are not properly treated, the effluents are not properly treated, then we can have a very severe impact on the ground and natural water or the surface water. So uh, the two very important assessments of the water can be surface water assessment and the ground water assessment. So the pollutant in the water alter aquatic uh, ecosystem in three ways. For example, uh, they reduce the concentration of, the, uh, concentration of dissolved oxygen. This is very important when the turbidity and the pollutants mix in the water. The uh, quality of water is impacted or affected in terms of the dissolved oxygen and then the biochemical bio oxidation demand of this water which is polluted uh, to become uh, again uh, drinkable would require a lot of efforts. The second is the uh, reproduction capacity are causing deaths directly uh, that how the water can uh, create some diseases. Alteration of habitat in interferes, interference with the uh, food webs that many times when the polluted water interact and interfere with the uh, natural habitat of the flora and fauna, they change, uh, bring the genetic changes in the, uh, the, the flora and fauna, and this ultimately would lead to permanent uh, distortion. Uh, another uh, uh, very important aspect is the surface water. Uh, you see that a lot of water, almost, uh, which is uh, coming from the rainfall and other sources are uh, working like a surface water, which are moving from different uh, parts of the uh, rivers and uh, from the glaciers and rivers and then ultimately going to the sea. So this water is definitely highly polluted with the effluents of the industrial waste. So accurate assessment of the concentration of pollutant and time uh, period during which it will be in contact with the water effects of these concentration on the aquatic life. So uh, there are uh, types of pollutants, for example, uh, the developed and the emitted, the emitted from the, uh, basically from the effluents and then developed during the chemical reactions. Relation of proposed effluents to quality standards and the prediction of water pollutants. So these are some of the, uh, the considerations we normally take into account while the surface water assessment. Uh, the second important part is the groundwater assessment, uh, which is really very important because if the quality of surface water is affected, it ultimately affects the groundwater. So the water quality and quantity impact from the proposed development uh, describe existing water groundwater conditions, unique groundwater resource condition. If there are some wells, there are some uh, unique uh, springs, there are some glaciers. So we definitely would like to identify these unique sources of water. Then I identify the applicable groundwater standard, which would come from the National Environmental Quality Standards by the EPA. And then we uh, baseline existing groundwater and then we uh, phase impact that what can be the impact on the groundwater in different phases of the project. And then we go for the diesel scale uh, uh, and from the micro scale. So uh, first of all, we go for a larger scale and then we come to the local scale or micro scale and then we determine the mitigation and control measures and uh, we consider the uh, related impact and issues. Another very important uh, impact can be the impact on the uh, archeological and cultural heritages, uh, which really is very important because many times uh, when we construct the new facilities, uh, even you can see in this, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, picture, that the, uh, the Tata uh, uh, very archaeological and cultural heritage has been damaged. This is the famous Makli graveyard uh, of the Tata, Tata along the Tata coastal, uh, Indus coastal uh, area. And you can see that this is deteriorating, unfortunately. There must be a restoration project for this uh, because uh, this is a cultural heritage, historical heritage of Pakistan. So the cultural heritage uh, are the, uh, the historic, the absence of evidence of archaeology as, as assessment does not constitute evidence for absence. So this is really very important uh, statement that if you don't uh, place archaeological assessment in your EA studies, environmental assessment studies, that does not mean that there's no 
cultural heritage damage or there is no impact on the cultural cultural damage it also means that in many studies we unfortunately forget the important uh, cultural uh, uh, impact assessment uh, so we may use the remote sensing the geographical surveys the field working or uh, field uh, truth analysis we may get the, uh, gather the data which may include the consultation of the statutory lists register records detailed research of the existing secondary data detailed walkout surveys and structural surveys so there might be some very important archaeological uh, sites in the uh, way of the construction for example in pakistan when we were extending or expanding the the gt road in lahore unfortunately uh, we have cut a bigger part of the shalimar garden which is an archaeological heritage and one of the listed facility in the un unesco buildings so this uh, is really very important that when we are going for the eia studies we should really assess the uh, cultural and archaeological heritage uh, another very important is the socio economical impacts uh, because uh, the environment is also the source of uh, uh, livelihood for the people and any project which we bring uh, in the uh, though it is for the development of community but at the same time the community is also impacted or affected by these projects so in this uh, uh, some of the important considerations are for example the health and safety the crime level the public risk and injury psychological environment the economy for example the employment housing commerce cost of living how this will be impacted or affected cultural and urban resources like religious and belief system identification recreational and scientific resources and this is really very important because in many cases we have the graveyards uh, in the uh, project area we have the uh, mosque and other uh, uh, belief temples uh, and mosque and many other uh, religious area uh, religious places uh, which can create a lot of problems with the stakeholders so we have to be very careful there might be some recreational and scientific resources some parks uh, some scientific resources uh, uh, for example uh, some of the parks may be reserved where the construction may not be allowed uh, then there might be the regional growth infrastructure for example the social services changes in the land use government laws and policies the population characteristic which include the birth and death rates density and distribution immigration emigration and immigration immigration means the people uh, coming to that place and emig e migration means that coming out of that area age structure sex ratio and all these are really very important for the social impact assessment uh, finally uh, we have uh, we will discuss a separate lecture but just to have a few li last slides that we would like to involve uh, for this assessment we would like to involve the local people which are affected uh, we will involve the proponent of the project beneficiaries uh, government agencies ngos uh, donors private sector uh, academics all these are involved in the process and uh, we should uh, uh, we will discuss these in the next lecture but uh, certainly it should be inclusive open and transparent relevant fair responsive and credible so that the people can give their uh, effective feedback in the uh, public involvement process in the project design so thank you very much i think uh, we will discuss this uh, in the uh, tomorrow lecture uh, or uh, day after tomorrow which is uh, more about the public involvement uh, in the eia process so thank you very much uh, i am really grateful for your time and patience jazakumullah uh, khair